All right, Peter, you're on. Man. Okay. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Marion Township Board of Supervisors meeting for August the 29th, 2024. Uh, the time is now 7.01 p.m. So first item, as always, is the Pledge of Allegiance. I'd like to ask everyone to please rise and uh, go through the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, as always, these meetings are recorded for audio and video. We ask that you please silence your cell phones uh, so as to not disturb the overall flow of the meeting. Um, for anybody interested, there are still masks and hand sanitizer at the front of the room. And uh, we'll move into the first order of business, which is the approval of minutes for the, the most recent meetings. Um, unfortunately, Irene is not able to be here with us tonight. Um, and I have not had a chance to look at the meeting minutes yet. So um, based on general lack of the uh, ability to form a quorum on that, uh, we will need to table the meeting minute approval until next month's meeting. Okay, uh, Irene also has the treasurer's report, but she is unfortunately homesick. Um, there were no, from looking through it, there were no abnormal bills. Um, it was all budgeted items and uh, other related expenses. Uh, there should be a copy of the treasurer's report on the table there for anybody that want to see it. And uh, I'll make a motion to approve the payment of the bills for August 2024. I'll second it. Motion made by Peter, second by Jesse. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Jesse. Aye. Okay. At this time, I will open up the floor to public comments. Anyone wishing to address the board, we ask that you come up to the podium and very clearly um, and as loudly as you can without yelling, state your name for the record along with your address and uh, make sure that you've signed in on the sheet at the front of the room for, again, record keeping purposes. Uh, Peter? Jesse, yes. It's time. Yeah, you need to come up to the podium because we have to make sure we get it on record. Thanks, Dan. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, I could hear that it was you, Dan, but I, I fear that I, I might not be able to hear everything you're saying if you're not close to the okay. microphone. At this time, some Philly group would like to abstain until you read a chart of both concerning some Philly. Okay, noted. Thank you. Okay, Jesse, do we have any other comments in the room? I'm not. Okay, thank you. I'm Brian Hunter from the Southern William Penn Boulevard. Um, just a couple quick things. Uh, during this past month, I had uh, reached out to the township and to ended up speaking with Rich, uh, Richard Butch from the road crew. He came down to look at a, uh, a hole that was out front. People were going all over the place to try to avoid it. Good news, even though the truck was uh, down at the time, Got the truck fixed, and within about two weeks, he got it fixed. I wanted to say thank you. He's not here to say thank you directly, but to the board, appreciate the uh, quick response. That said, there is still a crack across the road down there. I think it has to deal with that pipe that goes under the road down there. Um, and there's uh, an area that this top layer is removed. I don't know if plows did it over the years or what, but there's still a significant lump there, and traffic is still going in the opposite lane. A little bit of a traffic concern and traffic's going in the opposite lane to try to avoid a bump. Um, so I'd like to continue to hopefully work with him. He did say, hey, it'd be great if we could pave like a short pave mill at something about a 20 or 50 foot area right through there. That might help. Um, so I think I read somewhere you guys are looking for some more help. We're willing to get that and maybe that'll get addressed too in the time of matter. Then lastly, I would love to hear some updates or anything about Sheridan or from the township level. Lebanon line down in Wayne I think I was driving on the moon the other day when I was going through there. And I just want to make sure you guys are aware that that's a major, major problem on the street park. So make sure everybody converses through the town. But uh, if there's any updates, I think it was supposed to be a bid and maybe it didn't. It, it did. And that'll be coming up later in this meeting. Mm -hmm. Is there any yep. chance of having it fixed this year? Yes. Yeah. Thank God. All right. That's all I have. I appreciate your time. Yeah. So Jesse, if you can, before uh, that gentleman leaves tonight, make sure we have the, the correct location for the crack 
and the bump in the road. That uh, way we can take a look at it. Yeah. Is that right across from your address? Yeah, it is. It's, it's the, down the very hollow there. It's just beyond 700. Is that when it rained all the water? Oh, the last there. Well, now, when I was back in the rainbow, yeah, yeah. 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 that's the problem. That's another problem. It's raining and it's not from where. <laughs> oh, weird. That, that's the problem. They're all swirling there. Yeah. It freezes and because there's no, all that grass is like, stopped any melting. The rains are like, they're in the winter. Like, it's just, it's just lots of, I don't know how you fix some kind of drainage on that side, but from what I understand, the road is, I was, I was trying to weed some of it off from the mirror, it's almost where they were having it. Their side of it is, is in the grass in there, but the drainage thing is the That's the third one. We'll get that later. Thanks. Okay. Are there any other public comments? Quite a few signatures. You guys coming up? Are, are they all Stonecroft or is it other people too? Probably a lot from Stonecroft. Okay, so the real question is, has anybody come up to the podium right now? No, we're good. Okay, so in that case, uh, seeing no additional public comments, we will do the Stonecroft public comments in line with the rest of the agenda items that pertain to them, and we'll move into the main items on the agenda. Uh, the first is a general announcement. Uh, as we had mentioned in previous meetings, uh, please be sure that you're getting your septic systems pumped out. Uh, we do have a list of registered pumpers available in the township office upon request. And uh, you, if you do have a registered or a non-registered pumper that you wish to use, the act of getting them registered is pretty simple. Um, they, that company can just reach out to the township office and we'll take them through the process. Um, we are still also accepting letters of support for the proposed sewer grants that we're seeking. Again, to reiterate, you don't have to be in favor of the project. You just have to be in favor of us trying to get money so we could potentially actually afford the project. So um, if there's any <clears throat> follow-up on that needed, uh, please call the township office. I believe we have some very nice template letters that we can supply if you don't want to write your own. Uh, but every, every letter really truly does help when it comes to applying for grants. Um, speaking of the sewer project, the first main item on the agenda is the Act 537 plan. There are no new updates at this time. We had previously submitted a special study to the PA D Department of Environmental Protection, which was approved on April 30th. Uh, there are a couple of stipulations around uh, making sure we have water quality management permits and other approvals, uh, but that's going to come further down the line. The next item on the agenda is uh, the proposal that we had received for the new building. Uh, we had a conceptual plan um, that we all kind of agreed, to, went all agreed upon as a, a solid starting point. Um, and we have submitted for Senator Casey's discretionary funding and COVID-19 ARPA grants. Um, we have not received a word back on that. Uh, initially, it does appear promising to getting a couple hundred thousand dollars at least, uh, but we have no approved design plans as of yet. Um, we also met with Madison from State Representative Musser's office, uh, and she toured the building on June 25th with Irene. And Sabrina from Senator Fetterman's office was out on Tuesday, July 2nd. Um, this is all in efforts to help support the grant funding process on our part. Um, and uh, we're just kind of waiting to see if those grants come back and uh, give us opportunities to potentially uh, put a new building in place. Um, we're going to skip number three. Um, without Irene here, we don't really have a, a full panel, but uh, Jesse, I encourage you, and Lisa too, uh, encourage you to jot down things that you think would be uh, good ideas for the township, both short-term and long-term growth. Likewise, if there's anybody in the audience that has any ideas about ways to further improve the township, uh, we, we're looking at this in three basic categories. Uh, the first is beautification, um, taking the township and making it essentially prettier, putting up banners, lights, et cetera, um, things like that, potted plants, places, trash cans, that sort of thing. Um, efficiency, so taking something that we already have in place and making it better. Uh, and then the last one being capability, 
um, things that we don't have that would be nice to have. So I've spitballed some ideas. I have a list going, but Jesse, get get some ideas, get some thoughts. And then the next step on that is we kind of uh, collate all of our ideas together and then see where it starts fitting in from a, a cost and timing standpoint. Uh, obviously, the, the building is going to be uh, a capability sort of thing um, because we're going to be able to do so much more with it. But that's a pretty big thing. So that's probably going to be a little further out on the five to year, five to ten year plan, even with the uh, the, the the prospect of grants. That's a a pretty big project to do. So give that some thought. Think it over. There's at this point in the process, there's no bad ideas. So throw them out there, and we'll we'll see what's realistic and what what can be done in a timely fashion or in, within our budget. Um. Next item on the agenda is the proposed long-term rental inspection ordinance and fee schedule. Uh, Colin um, had suggested previously that we try to mimic the short term as closely as possible for ease of enforcement. Um, he has, I believe, gotten that to the point where it is ready for adoption. Uh, there was a, a note that was sent out earlier that I forwarded over from Andy um, that the long-term rental ordinance has been reviewed by craft codes and it is ready to be authorized for advertisement. So Jesse, unless you have any follow-up questions on that, I know Irene had previously dug into this in great detail. Uh, I will make a motion to authorize the long-term rental ordinance to be advertised. I'll second that. Okay, motion made by Peter, second by Jesse. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Jesse? Aye. Okay. Motion passed. Next item on the agenda is. Oh, with, uh, yes. The long term, uh, Glenn was in today from CRAF. Yep. Um, he said that he has been reviewing going back and forth with um, Colin regarding this. He suggested in the past, he has set up a town hall meeting to go over everything with the residents that would fall under this ordinance so he can explain everything to them. And if they have any questions, ask him. So it was just a thought that he just wanted me to throw at you guys to think about. Okay. I mean, I'm not inherently opposed to the idea. Um, I would almost see the problem with this is we don't have a already existing register of rental properties in the township. This is a relatively new thing. So it's not like we can targeted um, communicate that to people. Um, let me, let me think about that and see what, what the best vehicle for that is. I don't know if we actually have that many rental properties, but the problem is we don't know which, what, what they are and how many. Hey, uh, it got really quiet in there, Jesse. Can you say something? Let me know that the mic is still working. Can you hear me? I can. Okay. So it just got really quiet in there. Um, okay. Next is the Western Berks Joint Zoning Ordinance, Section 403. Uh, this uh, is the one about. Uh, yeah, hold on. Somebody's trying to get in. Oh. Can I some change in my phone? Yeah, okay. Sorry. So we have a guest. It's on. Yep. They're in. Is Julia still with us? Can she hear us? Yep. Julia is still here. Okay. Uh, Western Berks joint zoning hearing was held on the July 18th at the Heidelberg Township building. Uh, we are still waiting on Womelsdorf to vote because they did not have a full quorum at the, the time of the meeting. Once Womelsdorf approves, this will make this ordinance official finally. Um, we also have the next item on the agenda, which is about the saldo and stormwater ordinance fees. Uh, Engineer Bingham submitted this for review. Uh, Attorney McFarland is currently reviewing um, our saldo desperately needs to be updated 
uh, and uh, we need to update the fee schedule and then adopt both of those uh, things and approve a resolution for the fees. So, uh, Mike, unless there's major changes on that one, that one's a next month item, hopefully. Okay, I see you nodding there. Thank you. Yes, that's that's my understanding is that it would be next month. I'd like to wait for uh, Colin to... Colin. Agre agreed. Okay, uh, next is the uh, comprehensive plan. Uh, we received an email from David Hunter, who is the Berks County Planning Comm Director, um, which attended the WBJZ hearing on the July 18th session. Uh, the county is recommending that we update our comprehensive plan to become joint with the other municipalities neighboring us. Grant money is available and Attorney McFarland is currently reviewing the agreement. Next, uh, item number eight is the Stonecroft Pond for fire suppression. Uh, the fire chief was out to test the dry hydrant. Uh, filters were clogged at the time, etc. cetera. Um, I don't know that we have any further updates on this other than uh, there are two reports where they, and I, I say they being Stonecroft hired an engineer, not HOA, but uh, the developer, uh, hired an engineer to do uh, flow testing on the hydrants. And they stated they were successful. So I think there's there's a bit of a, a mismatch between what we've been able to observe versus what the developer is claiming. Um, and unfortunately, I don't know that we have any further developments or clarity on that other than we're at a, a bit of a, a standstill on they say one thing, we say the other. Um, the only more recent thing was the fire chief did confirm that uh, even though Stonecroft is a little more densely populated, being medium to residential, uh, there are no fire hydrants in Marion Township. So everyone is reliant on the pumper trucks and the, the model of firefighting in our area is is built around that fact that they, they know they need to bring uh, a high, high amount of water with them to fight a fire. So um, I'm sure there will be more on that. I don't know if the, the residents of Stonecroft have, have anything that they would like to add into that for the record, or Jesse, if there's anything that you would like to add to that point. But that is still, uh, we're going to keep that on as an agenda item until we get a little bit more clarity and closure on that. Yes, people might I'm just not on this. Still at you. DOA, DIA. It's also on the sheets. <laughs> it makes it easier. But I got a lot of people that give me funny words. Some of that name. My grandfather, Frank, would appreciate that I did that. Um, as far as the pond goes and the fire chief, sadly, I explained that there are two standards that they could have been shooting for. They shot the night. One standard would be NFC 1142. And that's the agricultural standard for fire suspension. It's not Jim Donadini's. And I don't think it's the right answer that we went that, but the township went that way. And I have to take exception to you, Jesse, to Peter, I think, to at least a 90% degree. And I, I really wasn't on the board when all those decisions were made. But the planning board clearly made the first decision. Um, the development ordinance that was in place then said that a fire chief could make an exception to the ordinance. For fire hydrants, wet fire hydrants, they could be further than 500 feet apart. They could not be further than 500 feet apart. He could move them to a different location, so long as that location was not further from another fire. And that was the ordinance. But the planning commission, for whatever reason was, decided to go with the agriculture. Okay, well, not what I would suggest, but that's, that's what they did. Um, and we can complain about all that, we, all that we want. There's another dollar behind that figure, too. If we're to correct that, there was construction for wet hydrants called for on the plan initially that they backed off of when you guys said, okay, go to agricultural. So none of the piping supports the hydrant. If we want to turn it around to what it should be, we have to repipe the whole thing. Because Aqua tells us that they want to handle the pressure. Um, 
the next area. And that's another to change. Um, we have street lights that were called for by the community. And the developer decided that, well, it says we'll provide lights. Okay, so Jesse, I'm going to provide lights for you. You're going to lease them from, from MedEd, but I'm going, to, I'm going to provide them for you. And you'll do that for the day you die. You'll lease those lights. To chain that's cost us more. We've paid well over $100,000 on lights that should have been bought. When we came in as a new group, we saw that error and we bought the next set of lights. Um, so there are four, four street lights that we provide uh, for the block and don't have to be leased. We'll always have to pay for the electricity, I get that. But leasing the heads was wrong. The lights are terrible in the memory of our other problems, but just it costs money to go over 100000 today. And I'm going to be 75 on Saturday, but I plan to be a little bit in the weeks. So I'm going to be paying for them again. Um, the plans call for two hydrants on the street. Landmark never made it an accepted to you vote. They just took out the hydrant. For a number of weeks, we went without hydrants. He brought that to your attention. They said, well, you know, landmark can fix it. Yeah, well, they did. Eventually, they put in two dry hydrants into the pumps that have never been certified when I was there. And we asked it. I know I've asked it three times. If it's going to be a test, let me go. I know what I'm looking at. I'm not just a cranky old man. I did it for a I did it for General Casey and the Pentagon for a living. So I know what I'm talking about. You need to get a 250 gallon per minute break from a, from a pump, from that water source, and you got to do it for two hours. Steady stream. If it breaks down, I can scratch again. And that pond won't support that. They're inseparable from each other now because the pond was not created equal and it hasn't been maintained. We, we couldn't maintain it, why not? If there was growth in it, it's not holding the water, it's supposed to hold down. To change one, it's coming out of my back. Um, it, it's humorous, but it's not humorous. And I know everybody in here, I understand that. I'm not making light of it. I readily admit to you that I'm a kid that grew up in Boston, and the fire hydrant in front of my house was up to that point. Was I, you know, so I know what I what, what I fear. The second reason for my paranoia is for 42 years I was a pilot. You ask any pilot what they fear most of it's fire. Can't put them up in the air. But on the ground, you can plan for them. And that's why the ordinance was developed the way it was in different sections. Okay, so the pond is in the hydrants now are inseparable. The fact that they hadn't been certified always brings in, also brings into question about the pond. And supposedly each step along the way, you release bond. I think innocently enough on the word of an engineer, and I, I don't know if the engineer didn't know what he was thinking of or what he was talking about, but he, we gave you the most recent illustration of that, and you'll see that. I'm not going to drag on that. But um, you have to start listening to us. If we didn't have Fred in the development, Don Smith before him and Jim Harris before that. I mean, there are one electrical, one electrical engineer and two civil engineers came in and told him the problems that was going on with the development. And he arrested with an engineer. I don't think it's any longer with the county. McCarthy is separate, but you're not working for this. Now, McCarthy was that, that terminated, what, two years ago? Or more? Yeah, yeah, all of this goes back, and it, 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 it's not meant to be offensive to anybody I can from. I, I probably am the minority in the development now that thinks that this is the best board we've ever had. Without exception, I, and you're to take public exception, you know that. You're not supposed to answer to me, you're supposed to answer to people. Okay, so 
There are solutions to this. One would be to freeze bonds now. And I know the bonds are driven to a specific item. If it says that there was supposed to be a, win a window and there was a bond on that window and the window is there and it works and it functions, you got to get back that window. I know. What I'm telling you is it's time for you folks to say, we screwed. We accepted the word of an engineer and we screwed up. Now, and don't nod or say yes, separate from the rest of the people who would have to make that decision. Your solicitor would, would, would advise you that way, I do too. But I think that's what's called for now, is that you freeze bonds and don't say yes or no on bonds. You say there won't be any bond money until we can resolve the errors that we made and that you made with this development. A, a second opportunity would be a tax holiday for the members of Stone Crop Village. It would be a, a, a wrench on it, but that would be another opportunity that's not against anything to laws, but you could you could do that for one or two years. And we can figure out what the bottom line feature of all that is and figure out what we have to do. Now I get up to the podium and you, you've heard of that one. Well, thank I, you for listening. Yes. I would like to address the, the bond issue that is coming up on the agenda. Uh, we my recommendation at this point is not to release any, any bond. However, that's because of the issues that are remaining. They have not satisfied. I cannot, if they satisfy the issues, cannot hold that bond legally. But they have not satisfied it to this point. So my recommendation is to deny any bond. So okay, so there was a bond on the on the driver. And the, the end, not you, but the engineer went up there and said, yeah, there's a there's a driveway there, by golly. Well, there was a change to the plans by golly that took aqua and took what was supposed to be a driveway out to our um, Begonia Court, and they put them into our parking lot, the heavy equipment. And Landmark never asked if you, they could do that or ever presented a plan that was an ultimate. I, I understand and I, I get your frustration, but that bond money is specifically identified to certain aspects. And that is the specific area that I'm talking about. Yes, and that, but, but if it's already been released, it's already been accepted, I don't have the legal authority to say, oh, we're going to take that back. So I think the solution to that, good sir, would be to say, we gave it to you wrong. We want to give it back because it wasn't done to standard. We thought it was. We relied on our engineer, and uh, it was not. So it was an, it was an error on our part. Well, well, we'll take that under advisement. Yeah, and I'm not looking for yes or no. I understand that's the legal decision. That's all I had to say. Any questions of me? Good. I have a story for you and whatever you need to. Okay. Okay. Walter 252 cover reclaim. The a uh, list that I submitted to the town, items that we've identified as the problem, uh, includes the clubhouse, which the drawing still says it's supposed to be a 60 by 120 foot building, 7,200 square feet, and the town approved a 2,800 square foot building is one example of and other things were the street lights where landmark leased street lights and then took the dollar that were in the bond money for furnishing street lights, carried it off. Uh, the parking lot is the most recent one we discovered. Landmark has been asked to fix it for years. They refused. And now we're and at some point in the past, somebody blessed it. Well, we took court damage. What's supposed to be five and a half inches of asphalt is about two and a half inches. So there's and this goes beyond negligence, I guess I call it fraud, that they claim to have furnished. Things 
They didn't. And for whatever reason, it was approved. Now, uh, I guess the other one area that's uh, an issue you've got street signs that are failing just because the they're delaminating. That was in the uh, thing. And the pot. So the I was told somewhere that land, uh, Landmark has previously requested and received approval on the pond dollars that, have a, that was released. Uh, there are so many loose ends with a pond that was supposed to have a dewatering, sediment removal, and clay liner review. That did not happen. Uh, we heard tales of excuses for it not happening. But we've also observed that the hot water level falls. Whenever we get a heavy enough rain to even fill it up close to the current design level, which is a foot and a half above the original, within a couple of days, that 18 inches of water drops in the spawn. And one of our engineers did an evaluation and said we can expect to be having between 0.1 and 0.3 inches of water evaporation loss in the day. So this is nowhere near evaporation loss. So this is another example of mistakes that were made. And it's our request that you claw back these funds. I mean, a letter to Landmark saying they failed to do these things. They falsified this information. It was well enough hidden, nobody picked up on it. I think a clawback is appropriate. And I just want to, just in closing, one other comment somebody said, gee, we can't afford to go into Landmark or Clayton. Stonecrawl pays about 64% of uh, Marion Township's taxes. So you're not going to spend our money to get us and help? Thank you. So real quick, I want to address the, the last item first. I don't think anybody has ever said that we don't want to spend the money to go after Landmark. The, if anything, the comment has been we need to be sure that it's got sound legal footing before we engage in, in any sort of litigation. Um, I do want to talk to Mike separately about the uh, the paving specification. If that I saw the pictures of the cores. If that is actually incorrectly done, um, that would be a situation where Mike and I would be able to talk to Colin because, uh, as you mentioned, that, that would be in some way, shape, or form fraud. They outright lied to us about what they did, knowing that the required inspection would not require coring and simply was a rolling load test. So I I'm not a lawyer. I can't comment on that, but I, I think that's something that we need to we need to review further. Peter, when I was up there, what I saw was not what was in the documentation I reviewed. Yeah. And all very, of the very, very thin. Yes. And all of the items that you had outlined between the pond, the street lights, um, any of the bond releases that would have happened for that, unfortunately, would would predate everybody, myself included, that was on the board. Um, I know we've talked about the streetlights several times before, um, and it's that that sticky legal terminology in there about furnishing, um, which shifts it from being a municipal matter that we would be able to, to to lean on them about to more of a civil matter between you as residents and the homeowners association against the developer for uh, sort of sticking the screws to you in in that respect. Um, the only thing I can I can offer and, and make a, a solemn promise on is if there are things that we can do, we absolutely will. But to the point of the bond money, if if they have, and we'll use the monuments, for example, if they have bond money tied up for the monuments and they successfully are able to address that and provide what the plan calls for, 
we are legally obligated to release that bond money. We cannot hold it. We will get sued if we do. And to that point, we will lose that suit, which will then lose your taxpayer. And that's, yeah. that's really where it comes down. We want to make sure that what we're doing is not a waste of your taxpayer money going after something that we know we can. Yeah, we are very much willing to, to take up the fight, but it needs to be a fight that is reasonable that we're going to win. Jesse, do you have anything you want to add further on that? Um, one thing I can say is, is I don't know if there was when this project was going on when parking lots were being poured, when ponds were being built. Um, we from now on with big projects like this, we got to make sure there's inspectors when it works. And we at SE have the capability and personnel, we can do that and have full time observation construction of any public improvements. And that is something that is paid by the developer. I, I can't speak to what was done with previous engineers because I, I don't know what the, their uh, their standard procedure is, but we typically like to have somebody out there whenever we can. I just think that's a good idea, Peter. For yeah, for I I completely agree. It's um, it, that's a good going forward thing. It's I doubt. Yeah. Um, doesn't help the, the residents of Stonecroft tremendously at this point. So we're going to need to figure out what we can do, uh, anything and everything to help them out. But absolutely going forward, good good practice to have. I think there were a lot of things, whether it was potentially waivers or exceptions back in like 2004 when this first kicked off or things like the fire code that they had mentioned around the fire hydrants. Um being a little more diligent and stringent, which I think collectively as a board, we are a little more attentive to that than maybe previous administrations had been. Yeah, if landmarks in there, we need to have they need to be watched when they're doing work. Well, it, does, it doesn't matter if it's landmark or anybody yeah. else. I think well, we I have agree. to have that. Everything moving that's, forward to be watched. Yeah. And, and to be honest, with all of these issues, my preference would be to have landmark come in and address this. That would be. Yeah, I would love to see that. Yeah, I would. I would love to have somebody from Landmark when we have the town hall about discussing kind of the 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 situation and and how if there's anything we can do, we will do it. Going through that whole thing, having somebody from Landmark there to represent Landmark, because in a lot of these instances, unfortunately, the township is probably going to be the messenger that gets shot. We're not the one that has caused the the harm or done done the negligent things, but we're we're the face that everybody gets to talk to. My name is Dan Klein. I live at 14 Rosebush Court in Stonecroft Village. Mr. Township Engineer, have you been to Stonecroft Village? Yes. And what have you looked at and seen? I went to go look at the pond, and I drove through looking for monuments and inns that were supposed to be in place. Did you look in the parking lot? I have not looked at the parking lot because that's not something I've been asked to do at this point. However, I see that you brought in some four examples. I did. It. Yeah. I do. You, have you ever looked at plots and plans for the Stone Crawl building? Yeah. Did you look at the parking lot on the Golf Forum? Yes. Does that look like it? Well, I do. I don't have the plans memorized by heart, but Would I you want to see them. Be happy to show them. Do I have a copy of the plans? So, so, so Dan, Dan, uh, I'm sensing, I'm sensing some hostility here. Thank uh, you yes, for you providing. Are. Yes, you that... are, Peter. Uh, Three I'm months understood. ago, we were to have a meeting. We've yet to have that meeting. We're so I am a little hostile. We're trying to find a place that will hold everybody, and I believe the school is not allowing anybody to have the correct. Place, correct? correct? So we are still hoping to have that. Try the church down at the end of town. It's pretty big. Yeah, so Dan, this is this is not necessarily like a dodge or anything on anybody's part. There was uh that first time that we had something scheduled with the school and after talking with you and some of the other residents of stonecroft 
Um, you guys had actually sort of encouraged us to wait a little bit until you had gotten your, I think it was the BCCD uh, right to know. Correct. Correct. So yeah. if you have that in hand, fantastic. We had been in, in touch with the school about possible dates pretty much every month since then. But there's, as of recently with school starting up, the, the window for the ability to rent the school out has changed. So we got to look at other venues. Okay. Is it possible, Peter, to move the fire trucks out and ask the Montmary Fire Company to let's be in there? I mean, I I think that's certainly a possibility. There's no there's no AV in there, so we would we would need to make sure that we're we're talking loudly. But other than that, it's a it's a suitably sized space. Right, now you, Peter. I get the sense that talking loudly won't be the problem. <laughs> <laughs> I, I also bring think a that's microphone and an amplification. I said, I can bring my guitar up and my. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we can. Possibly, but I, I just want to stress that the, the, the hostility. It, I am so hostile. I've been attending these meetings, I've been in the development for eight years. For eight years, I hear the same thing over and over and over, and I'm a little tired. Understood. I just now I think it's a little misdirected. Is that okay? We were turned five deeds over to property recently. One of those deeds was the parking lot of the clubhouse. That should have been inspected. That should have been inspected by you. Because it was a recent deed within your... We, we don't have any authority or jurisdiction when they turn over deeds. All we can look at is when the bond release happens. Prior to SDE for myself being... Those deeds did not. Those, those deeds were turned over this year. Understand, we have no authority over the deeds. It's yeah. about project right. done when it's inspected and when the bond releases request. That's where I have the authority. I don't have the authority when it comes to writing and passing over the deeds. I don't even get notification that deeds are passed. No, no notification. We didn't. You didn't know what they did. They just do things whenever they want. I'm sorry, Peter, I'm interrupting. It's okay. <laughs> You're a nice guy, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I try, Dan. <laughs> I'm just, I'm extremely, extremely frustrated with what transpires and what takes place and the crap that the landmark or stone group has pulled with us. Peter, I bought you a Rolls Royce. Did you know that? Uh, I did not. I haven't gotten the keys yet. I'll turn them over to you tomorrow along with the 25-year lease. <laughs> on that vehicle that you'll have to make the monthly payments on. Yeah. Like I said, Dan, I I really don't like the situation with the uh, the streetlights. If there was something that we could do and, and come in on a, on a white horse and, and fix, believe well, me, I, I would do it. But you, this, from talking with Colin... You're holding bond money. You're holding a lot of bond money. Unfortunately, it's not for the streetlights, though, Dan. It's it's the the law on this is very, very, very prescriptive, um, and this is where I really wish we had Colin here because I've talked to Colin about this. I've talked to Andy about it. Irene, having the legal background, she's weighed in on this too, because of the way that they did that and the way that they have it worded. We had to release the bond money at the time, which again predates me being a board member, but. Well, that that being said, it it, 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 hold on, it, it shift. Well, it, it, that becomes a civil argument because for what the plan says, and again, I don't like it. I think it's, it's terrible, but the plan says they have to furnish streetlights. So if they come to us and they say, Hey, there's the streetlights, you see them, we furnished them. The, the sub, the, the underpinning bits of that contract become a contract between the developer and the HOA, not between the developer and the township. Like they're not actually violating or non-delivering on any terms within the agreement of the plan at that point with us. 
But the parking lot's not finished. Parking oh, yeah. lot does not have its wear coat on it. You cannot yeah. put a wear coat on that parking lot because if you do, it'll be an inch and a half higher than the sidewalk. So when you come out of the clubhouse, you're going to trip and fall in the parking lot. So the whole yeah. parking lot, I had an engineer in there, and basically that whole parking lot has to be stripped completely down and rebuilt. That's going to cost a large sum of money. Yeah, that is certainly not a cheap prospect. I will agree with you that on that 100%. According to the engineer, the samples that were taken to the asphalt, it was discovered that they were an inch and a half shy of the specified amount stated on the overall site plan for the development. The specs were to be six inches of two-way stone, four inches of binder stone, and one and a half inches of wearing quartz. We're not even close. And the bond money was released for the parking lot. So many falsified documents. It's as simple as that. Okay, so I, I would say that let's put a pin in this. Mike, let's you, me, and Colin connect at some point this upcoming week to take a look at what our options are around um, specifically the items that we are now aware of in terms of Stonecroft providing false information around construction improvements. We'll do it. Okay. Thank you for your comments, Dan. Uh, is there anything before we move to the next item that you'd like to, to add about the, uh, I'll say, the current concerns that Stonecroft has? And keep in mind, we are going to have uh, a little further discussion on item number nine with the uh, the concrete monuments. Okay. Right. I'd like to approach the... Hold on. We've got more comments. Okay. Okay. Good. That is Calvis 37 Loganberry Court, Stonecroft Village. Uh, I don't have near the expertise that some of the other people that step forward do. What I'd like to do is review the process that got to transpire here. I mean, at some point, the developer bought a piece of property and a township, came up with a plan that the zone would work. From that point, I'm assuming bond money was uh, required as a insurance policy or guarantee that the project would be finished as reported in the plan. The plan is, hasn't been followed. Building permits were uh, issued for the building of the homes and I presume the clubhouse and, and, and a lot of other things, which did that cost go to the township as far as the inspections are concerned? Then I'm financed. No, anything developer related gets billed to the developer. Uh, building uh, permits are the price of the permits generally covers the cost of inspections. That's the idea there, so that the township residents are incurring those costs. Ultimately, the developer pays for the inspections of that. They pay for any on site uh, engineering presence that we would have. They pay for any attorney's fees that are uh, related to doing in the plan or dealing with this. Uh, but it's it's something that the developer is responsible. Indirectly, I would think you would agree that the people that purchased the homes down there go absolutely for those permits. Absolutely. So now the work goes on. We approach the township. We're not satisfied with the work. I was on the HOA board at the time. Roy Zartman was on a township supervisor at the time. He arranged a sit down with RHOA, Stonecroft, Stone Group, and the town, and Roy. And uh, communications were, were made, the building permits were, had been discontinued for, for a, a small amount of time, and then, and then reconvened. 
what we've been asking all along, when you inspect something, could the HOA please be notified so we could have at least somebody present to see the inspector? Never had. Next inspector, never had. The pond inspections on uh, catfish getting stuck in the filters and not being able to get water to the dry items. We were never made aware of any of these things going on. Then we received, we're still following up on it, and then we received conveyance letters. <laughs> the last five portions of common area 214 or 215, 215 I believe it is, have been conveyed to the HOA. We sat down in a meeting, we called the recorder of deeds, Mr. Sheeler, Sheeler, I believe it is, Fred. He said, I have nothing to do with the legality or the documentation of the transaction. I record the deed, period. We accepted that. He, you know, we thought, how can we be given something that hasn't been finished yet? And and uh, we have no options at this Then Collins, at some point in that same time frame, Collins with a letter that I presume was from the, that the board was aware of, that any issue that we are not satisfied with, Stone Group has basically met their uh, criteria for completing the project. It's, in Stonecroft Village, and that any further uh, action from this point on is between the HOA and the developer. So at that point, we weren't involved in the inspections. We had nothing to do with, is this done right or is it not done right? We've been saying all along what issues we have with the checklist now it's our problem to fight for the to go to court for who knows what period of time to get what uh, judgment, if any. And then meantime, we're going to have to correct these problems on our own as an HOA, potentially, at our cost, so that we're not looking at a parking lot that looks like it was not properly uh, develop. So that's my story. And I appreciate your time. We appreciate the comment and thank you for thank you for voicing that. Um, again, it's it's a difficult situation. The whole thing is is not a not a simple thing. There's no one thing that we can say or do that's going to make it absolutely 100% right. But what I can say is it's it's a tangled mess of civil versus warranty related claims and the other concerns that you had mentioned that had originally been within municipal, the municipality scope. Um, I'm not going to put Julia on the spot since she's standing in for the usual attorneys, but I will have a follow-up conversation with Colin uh, next week. Uh, he's a little under the weather tonight about if there are uh, specific things that we might be able to go back uh, and review based on some of the, the new, new things that are brought to light. I can't promise or guarantee anything just that we are going to to look at that and explore options. If there are any options that we can act upon, we will. Yeah, and, and I, I'm not familiar enough uh, to speak to it tonight just because I'm filling in last minute, but um, I will take all this back to Colin and Andy as well and discuss it with them. Thank you, Julia. And Peter, I would like to clarify the, the term inspection. Uh, the only inspections that, inspections that happen are during building code. They have to be licensed inspectors. Uh, public improvements, those are not inspections, those are construction observations. Generally what happens there is the engineer goes out, observes construction, certifies that it was done in accordance with the plans, and then they make a recommendation for bond release. But we don't inspect. So I just want to make that very clear. 
for insurance purposes and legal purposes. We are not inspectors when it comes to public interest. You seem like a reasonable man. We're not looking for a hard line. You have to come up to the podium so we can get. Uh, yeah, I, I, I appreciate it. Um, it. It's hard to hear you otherwise. Thank you. But it's not a close call when a driveway doesn't go to a street. It empties into that driveway that you're looking at. I mean, that's, I'm not looking for you to be able to tell if that works or not. It, although there is a sinkhole in it, and that was made abundantly clear, and water is now emptying into that sinkhole, not. So I think, I think we're not looking for a scientific inspection. I used to have to do that, and I, I, there's nothing up to the W. I want to do more than go into a four star gym and tell them that you missed. It. Yeah, I I wasn't trying to to demean anybody or anything like that. I just wanted to make it very clear that for insurance purposes, for us reliability, we, we don't inspect those items, but we do go out and observe the construction document for the, the township and the township reference. This particular inspection, like I say, why don't you get out and see it? You'll understand what we're talking about. And I know it's not your, it wasn't your job, it wasn't your job, but it wasn't close. It was clearly a mess. The, the same thing is true with, with water pressure, and we have to take in, uh, an exception to get that fixed because it comes off in your shoulders in my thing. We have a fire, it's a gas, natural gas beneath. We have a fire in that development. We're going to split up. A good volunteer fire department, but I don't think they've ever handled this. You know, I mean, it could hurt a lot of it. Uh, and it, the system is just, it, it's, for a thin dry hydrant, you have to move 30,000 gallons of water to serve. For one hydrant. And it's done by 250 times one hydrant. That's 30,000 gallons. You may get maybe 20. And the reason they did it, I know, they didn't want to plug up their equipment. They had to a feature. Not my problem. The problem is, is that, that, that now the pond wasn't done to see it. And that there is a pond there, and it does retain water. But two civil engineers in the development told you that like, what we done wasn't your solution. The, the, the plans that they had they said that wasn't going to work, and it didn't. I didn't for, think it's bad. Thanks, Jim. Yeah, for what it's worth, Jim, Lake Wobegon, we didn't yeah. think we didn't think the plan was going to work either. We actually rejected it, but then BCCD approved it. So we we got superseded on uh, uh, authority on that by a, 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 I'll say a higher institution when it comes to the approvals for that. Because uh, even the engineer at the time was like, no, this this is not a good idea. This won't work. Uh, yeah, come back up, sir. Yeah, Fred Walter, um, question. You said you did look at the pond. Were you able to verify the water level? Um, I wasn't out there for that. I was out there to check for algae and fish to see what the condition of the ponds were and generally see. Okay. Um, that was the big question whether you could actually look at the condition of the water levels. Or is that yeah. Yeah. Uh, Peter, they said they're done. Okay, thank you. I could hear that somebody said something at the very end there, but I couldn't hear what it was. So thank you for confirming. Oh, um, that was uh, Dan. Okay. The, the next item on the agenda is the Stonecroft uh, Bond 1009375 uh, as it pertains to the 74 proposed concrete monuments. Um, Stonecroft had placed, excuse me, another request to have that bond money released. Um, we will be denying that request. Uh, as we need a resolution around the monuments before anything else happens. Um, Jesse, uh, for your understanding, uh, we have to deny this uh, because if we do not, um, as a matter of operation of law, it would automatically be uh, essentially approved if we take no action. So 
Uh, I will make a motion Here, to deny. We, yes. Sorry. Before we do that, I, I do want to see if there's anybody here from Stone or from Landmark that would like to address that because they were supposed to be here to request that reduction of bond. Okay. Thank you. Uh, is there anybody in the audience from Stonecroft or Stone Group? Excuse me. Landmark. Landmark. To be clear, the developer of Stone Group and. I need you to name the state your name and out and everything. Uh, Nathan Weaver. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Just to be clear, uh, Stone Group is the developer and not one of the homes. So, you have to talk a little a, bit louder. A, a, Sorry. A, a transmittal was sent to the township and the engineer regarding a uh, full release of the, of the bond. If a full release cannot be accepted, there was an alternate request to reduce it to the amount held just for the monuments as well as the inspections and miscellaneous items associated with Is that able to be considered? We're swaying it to Section 509J of the Pennsylvania Municipalities Planning Code. The township has the right to retain 10% of the original financial security until all improvements are completed. And at this time, my recommendation is that they. Yeah, and that ten percent would be in one amount. That ten percent would be the amount that is left on the bond plus the nineteen thousand and change for the monuments. Uh, the amount that the amount that is outstanding is that ten percent. I believe the original bond was 0.9 million or something. Something along those lines. I don't have the numbers right in front of me, but that is what's being retained. It's ten percent contingency that was added at the beginning of the bond plus the money $19,397.05. It is our understanding that there is um, security held on things such as no water pipes, so the street signs, etc. No. Uh, that was highlighted in a letter to the township, so the yeah, that is not the case. We'll have to review that, but it's to my understanding that is the case and that's still being held. The only financial security in that bond that's being held is the 10% of the original financial security. In plus the monument. It's going very quiet there. Is there anything going on in the room? I can't tell. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so, with the discussion around monuments, I do have one question for the board. Um, we have gone round and round with these monuments and asked for different solutions to this problem. We are happy to provide the monuments. Um, we actually provided buildings at in the curve around the community, it was 300 billables, which by any modern survey standard is sufficient to remove the private right away divisions up for up for discussion and to be identified. The monuments along the public right of way, uh, William Penn Boulevard have been installed, which I believe you can confirm that. Um, and so the only the only ones remaining are ones that are not able to be set with a concrete line due to utility conflicts. So we've had discussions about this. Um, it's understanding that the utility is going to fall to However, uh, with a 36 inch concrete line that can't be installed on top of a utility line. In addition to that, it was discussed about possibly setting an iron pin for that. However, that also is not considered a viable option due to the obvious safety concerns of Henry steel pin directly over top of a public internet. So at this point, we're, we're kind of looking for a little bit of feedback on that. We've offered other solutions as well. We offered installing a nail or screw in the curb by the drill hole to better convince the patient of those of the drill hole, which are an offset. For the permanent ones that would be in the 
protocol. We've also discussed the five foot offset monument, which um, we are personally not of the opinions of exclusion, as that will cause for confusion. 20 years, and some gives look at the property line or to the right of the way. Five foot offsets can be also confusing. Um, however, if that is supposed to the township, that can be done. Just that's landmark and not landmark standards. So, if there's any guidance or, or information that we that the board would like to provide to seven groups, that we can get this project finished. As many people have said, it's been going on for a number of years, and all the work except this mining page is done. So, aside from the question about the pavement, uh, which has not been brought to my attention, um, I can't. I can speak to that, but I am looking for some kind of discussion. Yeah, and, and in my email to you, I did say that the, the pins could be placed there, and if you're uncomfortable with placing them over electric, you could have a uh, hydro excavation or an air excavation of that area, which is uh, sure you're familiar with that process. Uh, it's probably pretty expensive, but it, it does allow you to excavate safely to see what the depth uh, utilities are so they can safer for those pins where they're supposed to be. So that would include serving the currently established lawn areas to, to uh, you, can, you can create a, a, a kind of four by four section for for that so, with a back truck and not have any real disservice to anybody's yard. So if that's the, the direction that we're seeing from the board, uh, we can discuss that within our control. And, and come back with a, a response. I find that to be a little bit concerning condition because that's so will be compacted to the same level that it's currently at. Uh, it's like the it can be. But if that is the direction that we're getting to put in, maybe we should be You can ask the residents if they'd like that option. Even if they're here. Uh, if they would prefer monuments in the five foot offset, I'm okay with either one. To be honest, these are the best people to ask right here. To be honest, you need to have to come up this way and say, Oh my god, I have no idea. Who you are you sitting The girl holding coffee. They are not in this. I'm sure you have to see. We may have to wrap it all planning for you. And if you're saying that roles are talking about um, my first opinion on the building board member. Um you got you know you've got a fairly good market. I'm Tracy Trout, 39 Sweet First Lane. I am a member, voting member of the HOA. And I find it ludicrous that this discussion is even going on with no contact between us and them ever. And now that we own all of Stonecroft because we have the deeds to everything, I can't imagine any resident would allow them to come back in and touch any property that we have. Because it's now ours, right? Sorry. That's what makes sense to me. Uh, and my sort of money is just big too. The whole development. I, um, I think that there's but oh, your, point, your point stands. Your point stands. I'm sorry. Four. Three hundred? Okay. I'm sorry. But, but we do to that point, we do have to provide them some direction that is satisfactory, whether that is to install the monuments or the pins. Otherwise, we have to release that monument. And I, I get that. And so what those monuments do is delineate each homeowner's space. Is that what we're talking about? It's only along the roadway approach. They should have pins at all the corners of people's properties. It's just areas that are along the roadway branch. So you're talking to you, but the land is ours now. And so he should be talking to us. Because we ultimately have to make 
That makes sense to anybody else in the room? Okay. Good question. And time for Jamie Most Bush Court. I ask you, sir, who do you represent? You represent Stoker. You're their attorney. I'm not their attorney. It is my understanding that Stoker. They did. Can you keep your mouth here to log that one? I'm sorry. That's the best. Everything's got to be recorded and you can stand up that side the whole thing. Yeah. Okay. And before we yeah. fight. Sorry. So if you can repeat the question and then repeat everything so then it, it gets recorded. Who do you represent, sir? I'm not an attorney, but I am here on behalf of the Okay. And what is your company? I am here on behalf of the That's not what I ask you, sir. I ask you, what is the name? Of your company, he's 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 going. I'm just going to John, 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 He's going. He's going to say Stone Group because it is it, the property was started by Stone Group. No, he's standing here representing Stone. We need to come up here. I'm sorry. I'm not that is the record of land all over that. Okay, if you can get closer here, it's. I'm sorry, this stuff is really hard to pick up. And I get that. Thank you so much. Nate, Nate works. For is representing Stone Group as I am here representing Stone Group. Okay, and then just say yeah. your name again. So yes. we're good. My name is Pat Dennis. Pat Dennis, thank you. I'm the director of land development. Nate nor I are on trial this evening for what's going on. So we've heard we've heard the comments. I've heard the comments. We will take them back to ownership. We've got the direction that we need for the monuments, which is what we came from. So I appreciate all the comments. I really do. Well, we've got some direction on that. The bottom line is, is that now we're sitting here and they're standing at a podium going back and forth at each other. I think for Robert's Rules of Order and some forum, we just need to kind of move forward where we've heard the comments, we get it, and we would either we need some more direction or eligible monuments. I think we just need to make this more productive than sitting here arguing with each other about the people. Okay. Yeah, so that's my two cents. No, don't walk off, please. Do not walk off. So you're here for monuments so only. But you told me you're the land director for the the director of land development. Yes. Did you see the course I put on the table? I didn't see that. So, not so stop for this now. Uh, it's already stated that Stuart Paul HOA has uh, an attorney with them, and they're not here, but we came by them, and therefore we're not necessarily directed to speak to them. Sorry, but we don't have a fighter to turn it. There's been a letter sent to our office from the attorney from the agent. At this point in time, we would like to only speak to the intention for this. Okay. We'll take it up at the special meeting that they're invited to. Uh, do we want to make a motion on this tonight, Peter? I think at this point we have to reject the current request based on the lack of, uh, I'll say, clarity or completion on the monuments. Um, Mike, give me the courtesy of following up with Landmark if they have it, or I should amend that Stone Group. I apologize. Um, following up with Stone Group to make sure that the the directive on placement of those monuments, whether it be through excavation, hydro, or air. Uh, or offsets that we are clear on the requirement for that. Yes, I, I will wait until Colin is back at work, and I would like to meet with him before we officially make a recommendation to Stone Group. Agreed. I think that's prudent. We just okay. no notification when they plan on coming in, or we have. A... So. I didn't get any of that. Somebody repeat. Uh, Dan just said he would like to have notification when they're coming into the development. Okay. The uh, representatives from Stone Group, can we and I can we make make sure that something is sent to the HOA as a courtesy? Okay. Yes, and, and said, okay. And um, yeah, he's actually shaking his head back there. You can't see him, but yeah, mm -hmm. he's you say okay. Okay, thank you. That's Nathan Weaver saying okay. Okay. 
Thank you. Um, on that, I think we've exhausted the discussion around that, so we'll move on to the next agenda item, which is number 10. Yeah. Around yeah. Um, think, uh, oh, wait, I, we, have to, we have to motion for that. Thank you, Lisa. Yeah. Um, I will make a motion to reject the current bond request around monument placement until greater clarity and uh, detail is defined with the uh, developer. And include in that the 10% reduction as well. To permit the ten percent reduction or, or reject no, the ten percent reduction. Ten percent reduction as well. It's two separate requests. Okay, so let's yeah add, add that in there, Lisa, to also include the rejection of the ten percent reduction request. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so you're making a motion. And I'll second. Jesse seconded it. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Jesse. Aye. Okay, so we will put the stone crawl to rest for the night and move on to number 10. Okay. Did he sign in? I was waiting to see him. Yes, thank you. 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 Yes, all right, take care. Have a great night. Thanks. Thank you for coming out. All right. Okay. On to road maintenance. Uh, we are working on assembling the list for the updated uh, six-year cycle on road. Um, we've had to adjust a little bit, and we're going to have to shift some things around based on what we had to do last year with the culverts. Uh, but I think we're we're starting to get ourselves back onto the correct track with the remediation of Sheridan this year. Um, hopefully, we get what we're expecting next year in uh, liquid fuels and turn back allocation, um, so that we are able to continue the trend of addressing some of the more egregious areas uh, of roadway within the township. Um, likewise, um, Mike, I know we have a couple of projects that are. Um, spec'd out already and are ready for grant submission. So when grant opportunities open up in the beginning of next year, typically that's a February or a March thing. Um, we'll put put a couple of projects in again and see if we're able to secure any grant funding. Um, Jesse, I, I won't belabor that point too much, but do you have anything that you would like to add further on that? No. Okay, excellent. Moving on, uh, Wintersville Culvert. This is located at 3820 Wintersville Road. Uh, we held a special meeting on August 15th to receive bids and uh, award out the uh, work contracts. The bid was awarded for this work to Mr. Rehab for a total of $59,521 contingent upon review by Engineer Bingham and Attorney McFarlane. Next is the Sheridan Road South for drainage and paving improvements. Uh, also at the special meeting that was held on August 15th, we reviewed bids um, for this and awarded that contract to H and H and K Group for two hundred and sixty six thousand seven hundred and ten dollars. Uh, this is also contingent upon the review by Engineer Bingham and Attorney McFarlane prior to it being awarded officially. Next is guide rails. Uh, this is around the portion for William Penn Boulevard and Hickory Road. We made a motion to accept the lowest bidder of the William, uh, of William Orr's and Sons in the amount of twenty thousand two hundred and eighteen dollars. Uh, we have to sign the agreement with William Orr and Sons and authorize SDE to issue a notice to proceed. Um, so, Lisa, if that agreement is ready, I will sign that when I'm back uh, back in town, and uh, I would make a motion to authorize SDE to issue a notice to proceed uh, upon the signing of that agreement. I don't know if you saw, but I just handed Lisa the agreement, uh, so she does have that. <laughs> Perfect. Um, if you leave it on your desk Friday, I can stop in and, and do that when I get back. Brian, do you need any questions? Okay. All right, yes, I'll put it on my desk. Okay, very good. All right, so then you made the motion... To authorize SDE to issue a notice to proceed, proceed once the agreement is signed. And I'll second that right away. 
Roll call, Peter. Aye. Jesse. Aye. Okay, next is the extension of the stormwater pipe along Marion Drive to Main Street. Uh, bids were placed on PenBid on June 24th. Uh, we had awarded this to M&A Excavating, but upon further review by the engineer and the attorney, we found out that M&A is only a PennDOT subcontractor uh, and are not qualified as a general contractor, which uh, does not meet the required specifications within our proposal. Um, we had to summarily reject the bid and rebid this out. Uh, for the special meeting that was held on August 15th, uh, we received new bids and awarded this to the lowest bidder, which was Allgaier Enterprises LLC in the amount of $77,875, also contingent upon the review by the engineer and the attorney. Um, so I, I, we don't have to go into that too much because without Colin here, I think it's going to be an incomplete conversation. Uh, but Mike, if there's any updates that you can provide in between meetings to the Board of Supervisors on those road projects and the, the contingency reviews, that would be much appreciated. Absolutely. And we did send out those notice of intent to warn, so we're just waiting on them to come back for us to review. Okay. Thank you. Okay. The Bollinger Road overflow matter or fill overflow matter, uh, we will need to remove some fill at 341 Hickory Road. Uh, that was placed along a steep embankment of a roadway, but ultimately rolled out of the right-of-way into private property. Uh, we held a special meeting um, for all of those things that were bidding-related, and uh, we did receive bids for this. Um, the one bid that we received was the Construction Master Services to do this, which they quoted $109,534.25. Um, this bid was rejected as uh, we have to rework the specifications on the request for proposal uh, because it was bid, I think, way higher than it should be. Uh, rebidding will take place in December uh, so that we are able to coincide when the work is going to be done with the, the permit window. So that gives the contractor greater flexibility and, and should reduce the price substantially. Um, beyond that, we're going to skip number 16 due to uh, the possibility of litigation that still exists. Uh, and I, I won't tread on that without Colin present. The next item on the agenda, number 18, is property maintenance issues at 660 Canal Road. Uh, this is that shack that's owned by AT&T. The residents of 663 and 664 Canal Road have agreed to demolish the shed at no cost to the township. Um, we've also agreed to waive the permit amount of $304.50 uh, that was approved by Kraft based on the fact that the residents are willing to do all the demolition and cleanup at no cost to the township. Uh, as of right now, uh, demolition has not started, to my knowledge. Um, uh, but do uh, you still want this on the agenda every month until it's done, or can we remove this? Um, I would say just keep it on there until it's done. Um, Lisa, I'll talk to you in Seoul tomorrow about. Um, I want to maybe structure the agenda slightly differently so that we have like groups of things, but okay. we, we, don't, we don't have to do that on, on this meeting. Okay. Um, next is the dumpster exemptions. We received four dumpster exemption requests um, from looking through them prior to the meeting. Um, it looks like all four of them are legitimate uh, exception requests all our businesses or farms and let's go through one by one let's the first one is Dwayne uh, Brubaker and I'm trying to find Dwayne's paper in the packet here give me just a second Okay, Dwayne Brubaker has DLB Exteriors LLC is the company. So I'll make a motion to approve the dumpster exemption request for Dwayne Brubaker, 7 Idris Road. And I'll second that. 
Rosal Peter. Aye. Aye. Okay. The next one is Troy and Lynette Gelsinger at 181 Forge Road. Uh, they have provided a um, account summary slip of billing for the uh, business that they run from that property. I'm trying to see if the the company name uh, Forge Hollow Farm, I believe, is on there. Let me yes, check. Let me check something real quick. Yeah, I. I don't see. A don't, I I don't see. Yeah, I'm I'm checking. To see if there's a business registration there, and I don't see anything with that. Uh, let's let's table that one for this meeting until we can we can determine what what they fall into on that. Whether it's a farm based exception or a business based exception, because I don't see any business. Yeah, yeah. It says you're starting to five or more farm dwellings of commercial unit. Yeah, it's not an apartment. I know that. And I can't. I can't. I. I just. I tried looking up the address and some of the the contact information to see if there was a business associated with it, but I. I got nothing. Well, Peter, maybe I can look it up online. Yeah. So, uh, and I don't think it's a farm either. Looking at it. But let's let's table that one for now. So the next one is for David and Katie Sadison. Uh, this is for uh, a farm request. It's a, a dumpster. It's a four-yard um, dumpster that would service the following properties, 3982 Smaltz Road, 3976 Smaltz Road, and 3993 Smaltz Road. Um, I'll make a motion to approve that. Yeah, I'll second that. Okay, motion made by Peter, second by Jesse. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Jesse. Aye. Hey, Peter. Yes. 181 is 63 acre farm. Ah, okay. Thank you for confirming that. So uh, going back to number two, I'll make a motion to approve the request for 181 Forge Road uh, as a, a farm dumpster exception. Yep, and I'll second that. Road call, Peter. Hi. Jesse. Hi. Okay. And then number four. Uh, number four is for Jacob Weiss, uh, who owns the, the that poultry operation there. That's six sixty Marion Drive. Um, I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second it. Can you roll call, David? Yes. We hear yeah. a motion. This is second. Roll call. For uh, David and Katie Satterman. Number three? Okay. All right. So the motion was made by Peter, second by Jesse. Roll call, mm -hmm. Peter. Aye. Jesse? Aye. Okay. Sorry. Then we'll go to number four. Yep. Uh, I made a motion to approve the Jacob Weiss dumpster exemption. Okay. No, second. Okay. So the motion was made by Peter, second by Jesse. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Jesse. Aye. Okay. Next is uh, number 20, the Blue Spruce 4405 Conrad Weiser Parkway. The property owner is adding an addition to an existing building. The Planning Commission has reviewed this and states that more and work needs to be done with the stormwater management plan. Uh, Engineer Bingham has recommended that we entertain three waiver requests. I waiver the one commission actually recommended conditional approval. Not they did okay. at, at the last planning commission. 
Yeah, it wasn't. It was July, and then. I just wanted to clarify. Uh, so I wasn't here in July, so we made this table. I think um, one of the supervisors. Yeah. So the plans themselves are relatively clean. It's a, it's a matter of administrative items, getting signatures, uh, finalizing the cost opinion, getting the bond settled, uh, reporting of plans, things of that nature. So as far as I am concerned, plans are relatively clean. And Brent, you're here. Would you agree with that statement? Uh, yeah. Yeah, we would agree to, to all the remaining items. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, we were here in July. Uh, there were some stormwater issues to clean up, so we did that. We came back, uh, and then we got a uh, another review from from SDE dated August thirteenth, and that that letter uh, I have that in front of me. It's it's all we you know it's all very minor things. It, and administrative items, which we, we agree to comply with. So, so Peter, there's three items on the agenda for waiver requests. So we need to go through each of those. And if you are comfortable with it, uh, if he's looking for a conditional approval, uh, the conditional approval would allow for him to satisfy those administrative items without having to come back before. Uh, but that's entirely up to you whether you want to do an additional approval. Okay. So as long as it meets the scrutiny of the Planning Commission, I don't have any personal uh, qualms about providing conditional approval. Uh, let's go one one by one on the three waiver requests. Uh, first one is waiver four point or for four point two zero on the saldo to allow the plans that are submitted to be a combined preliminary and final plan. Uh, I'll motion to approve that waiver request. I'll second it. Motion made by Peter, second by Jesse. Roll call, Peter. All right. Jesse. All right. Okay. Next is waiver for 307. Uh, this is the stormwater ordinance to not require a groundwater recharge due to the high loading ratios, minimum separation distance, and karst topography, allowing the utilization of a managed release concept to satisfy water quality requirements. Um, based on your review of the, the submitted items, Mike, do you agree with that substitution there for waiver on 307? I, I do. And, and DEP uh, regularly uses the managed release concept in lieu of uh, infiltration when it's not advantageous to do so. So my recommendation would be to uh, grant that. Okay. I'll motion to approve that waiver request for 307 of the stormwater ordinance. Not second. Motion made by Peter, second by Jesse. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Jesse. Okay, and the last waiver is for 4.31 on the salvo, uh, saldo to allow for plans to be prepared at a scale of one inch to per, per 40 feet. I'll motion to approve that. I'll second it. Motion made by Peter, second by Jesse. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Aye. And then the, the final thing would be the recommendation for conditional approval conditioned upon satisfying the engineer's review letter and any outstanding and any comments that the township solicitor may have. So Lisa, if you got all that, I'd like to make that motion for conditional I, I'll, approval. I'll, I'll send you. I'll send you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Mike will uh, fill me in on all yeah. that. Yeah, for the fact. Yeah. So. yeah. Per per the, the the stipulations that Mike outlined around the review and approval of planning commission and everything else, uh, and he'll send you the exact specifics. Uh, I would like to make a motion to authorize conditional approval. And I'll second. Motion made by Peter, second by Jesse. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Jesse. Aye. Okay. Next thing on the agenda is number 21. This is 85 Main Street for Twilight Acres. The preliminary final plan has been submitted. Uh, they're proposing to add on to the existing building, which was the old social hall, for a bakery with storage and shipping areas along the cafe. 
Uh, the Planning Commission reviewed and has not made any recommendations at this time. So we should hopefully have that for next month's meeting. If not, we'll keep it on the agenda until we have, uh, excuse me, some recommendations from the Planning Commission around that. Uh, next is the uh, request for 4315 Conrad Weiser Parkway uh, to be designated as an ag security area. This is owned by Justin and Bethany Hurst. Uh, we need to adopt the resolution entering the Hurst property in ag security. Uh, Attorney McFarland has prepared the resolu uh, necessary resolution, which is 2024-13, and we have approved this at the June Board of Supervisors meeting. So um, unless there is something additional, Lisa, find out from Colin, I believe we can remove that one from the agenda as it is completed. Okay, I was going to ask you that. Okay, next, number 23 is Jeremy Troutman's pol poultry operation letter of credit release. This is for 991 Stouchburg Road. We have received a request for an escrow, re escrow release uh, some work still needs to be done to finish the project. SDE has recommended a partial release in the amount of $84,350.91 until deficiencies have been addressed. This leaves a remaining balance of $10,000. Uh, CoBank has a different amount due to an auto increase, and we're waiting on a reply from CoBank, uh, who, will, who will be speaking with the owner on the account to correct so the money can be released successfully. Um, yeah, anything I'm in for her, I can email her. Yeah, yeah, it was relatively yeah. Um, I, I will try to follow up on that. Yeah, because they, she will not release anything because I even asked after the last meeting, we approved it to be a letter sent that we would leave only the 10000 in there. And she said no, came back no, and she wanted to follow up with the, her, the customer of the account, so... I'll, I'll see if I can follow up with her again tomorrow. Okay. Um, based on that, we've already authorized the release that was uh, motioned at last month's meeting, correct? Correct. We just have to wait for the corrected amount. Yes. Yeah. Okay. We motioned so, to uh, authorize leaving 10000 in the account, whatever amount they have. But um, I guess that's not good enough. But Okay, so what we'll do once we have the corrected amount is at the whatever the next full board of supervisors meeting, we will enter that into record uh, so that we have it recorded what the actual released amount was in association with the uh, Jeremy Troutman poultry operation. Yeah, I, I carbon copy um, Mike on it so he knows what's going on and he, yeah, he knows I'm on it. I can try to follow up on it, so but I'll look into it again tomorrow. Okay. Uh, next item is the property damage from snow plows, uh, the complaint form and protocol. Uh, we're working on that. Uh, Attorney McFarland did review it and suggested that maybe we want to reconsider this. Um, I have some thoughts and ideas that I will circulate a little bit. Um, rather than it being a complaint form, maybe making something that's a little more general purpose about a road damage form. That could, we could use uh, other times of the year in addition to snow plowing, and maybe we'll address some of the liability concerns that Colin had. So uh, more to come on that. There will be some offline discussion between uh, legal counsel and some of the supervisors around that. Um, with any luck, we might have something that we can discuss further uh, next month at the meeting. Uh, number 25 on the agenda is 136 Main Street. Uh, resident Diane Fisher would like... Uh, the alley between 136 Main and 134 Main Street closed uh, so that she can have a function at her residence on October 20th. Uh, we would need to make a motion to authorize the alley to be closed on that date. Um, try to visualize where that alley is. I don't think there's really much of a concern for through traffic on that. Peter, would you like the drawing? Um, I'm looking up it on, on Google Maps as we speak. There is another outlet there. Two other lanes for access there. Okay. Main Street. Okay. 
Okay. Yeah, I mean, I I don't have a problem with that because there's alternate ingress and egress points. So, um, what are your thoughts on that, Jesse? I'm I'm saying I'm I'm leaning towards approving it. Uh, I don't have a problem with it because there's li there's two other lanes that can be used that day. So, I mean, if if she needs it for a day, I I, I would not see an issue. Yeah. Okay. Be, I'll make them. If there would be like only one lane there, and it would be yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. If it was like, hey, we want to close down Main Street because we're having a, a house party, that would be like, no. <laughs> um, but it, it's a little side alley, and like, no, no one's probably going to use it that day. Anyway, it's just it's the formality of making sure it's officially closed. That way, they don't have any problems there. So, I'll make a motion to approve the request for from Diane Fisher to uh, close the alley next to 136 and 134 Main Street. Uh, on October 20th. And I'll second it. Motion made by Peter, second by Jesse. Floor call, Peter. Aye. Jesse. Aye. Okay. Next item on the agenda is the equipment and equipment repair. Uh, the little truck was taken in on August 5th to get the rust in the floor uh, of the cab area fixed at John Wenzel's body shop. Um, the shop received the wrong part to fix the truck. Uh, the correct part was received, uh, but due to that reason, there's been a delay on getting the truck back. Um, do we have any ETA or idea from John Wenzel Body Shop of when we will get the truck back? Uh, I haven't heard anything. I think they were conversing with Butch, and Butch is not here tonight, so I can't ask him. I don't know if you want me or Jesse to reach out to them. There has been a lot. Um, I just wanted to say, Peter, that Butch has been conversing, but not telling anybody else um, about things. Um, so we've got to have that conversation again. Um, so. Okay. Um, well, let's put it this way. If you don't hear from Butch tomorrow on this, um, let's, whether it's uh, Lisa, you or Soul, Okay. Let's call the body shop and ask for kind of a, an ETA on when they're going to get the truck back to us. Okay, you can do that. Okay, fantastic. Uh, next, the John Deere boom mower. Uh, this needs some safety lights, lettering, and signage. We are still waiting on the title work and the license plate. Um, Jesse, did you ever hear from Butch about the, the the whole reverse gear thing? Like, what's going on with that? Um, so basically, I had Butch drop that off at Agritier, and I'm going to have them work up, work up a quote um, to do all the work that it's needed. Um, they're supposed to write a quote up. Um, Butch had brought to my attention that the hydraulic cylinder leaks profusely. He said it loses reverse when it gets hot. It needed a light strobe light put on the top. Um, and I know the hydraulics front tires rub the hydraulic lines on the front of the tractor. Um, so I told Agritier, I said, look at it, tell me how much it's going to cost, and we'll look at a plan of action um, and go from there. When Butch dropped the tractor off, he didn't um, tell me any of that, and he didn't leave a phone number or a email to get in touch with the office or any of us. So I did follow up because I knew he was going to be dropping it off that day and gave them our emails and phone numbers so it can be handled. Okay. Okay. Uh, next is uh, we received a, a submission for equipment purchase around a, a blower, like a leaf blower, essentially, to go on the John Deere tractor to blow the grass clippings away while mowing. Uh, the current brush that we have been using is falling apart. Um, we did receive some quotes from uh, three places, excuse me, four places. Uh, first one, uh, actually, no, it's only two places, but it's various pieces of equipment. So I think um, we're below the uh, the threshold on some of these, but I think we're, we're going to need to have uh, three separate quotes. We've got Zimmerman Farm and Agritier. We're going to need to have a third one to be compliant. But anyway, um, the first item that we had gotten from Zimmerman Farm was a Weaver Line Air Raid blower for $3,200. Uh, 
Next one was a 2024 Buffalo Turbine Cyclone, which is a $7,125 unit. Uh, Agritier uh, provided a quote for a PB350 PTO driven blower for $6,500. And then Zimmerman Farms also supplied a quote for a PB350 blower, uh, same model as the Agritier one, for $6,775. Um, I think we should look into this further, uh, not making any decisions tonight. Uh, but whether it's a brush or a blower, we do need something that will remove the debris from the roadway as we are mowing. I agree, Peter. And the brush, I went back and looked at it. It doesn't look too bad. I mean, it probably does need to be replaced, but we could probably finish off this year with it. Okay. Um, I mean, the other thing that we could consider is we should look at some quotes for just getting another brush. Or that, yeah. Um According to Butch, it's too small. Um, well, I mean, we can we can certainly look at yeah. prices for an appropriate sized brush. Um, right. I, I don't know, but I also didn't see any of these items that are in front of me. These no one, two, three, four. I, I didn't. I don't know what pieces of equipment these these are. Yeah. Um, so I I wouldn't be able to make a decision on this. Okay. So in the packet tonight's packet i'm scrolling down to get the page number give me a second i uh, scrolled around there are there are pictures it's starting on page 63 i can see that yeah yeah 63 through 66 is the the blowers but again i think we should look we if we we're going to entertain the the idea of getting a blower, we would need a third written quote. And we should also, before we consider spending on that kind of piece of equipment, we should look at what uh, the cost of getting a replacement brush would be. Yeah, I agree with that. <laughs> I'll make sure uh, Jesse gets copy of that. Uh, okay. Thank you. Uh, next, Conrad Weiser Youth Baseball is requesting permission to use the baseball field during the fall softball and baseball season. Practices and games are held from August to October with times of use uh, ranging from 5.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, a certificate of insurance has been received. Uh, they will also, as usual, provide a porta potty We would need a motion to authorize them to use the field at no cost. Uh, I will make that motion. And I'll second it. And then can I add that we need to get that ball field drag, drag drug. So if we could get maybe possibly ask Carl one of these nights. Um, yep. So at ball field. Yep. Let's uh, let's finish the motion, and if we need to discuss that further, let's let's. But I, I agree with you. Let's get Carl out there to to do some TLC on the ball field before the the little league shows up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So motion made by Peter, second by Jesse. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Jesse. Aye. Okay. Next on the agenda, item number 30 is the ISOLV payroll. Um, we received uh, information on timekeeping and hiring processes that that firm offers. Uh, we'll have to take that under review and advisement to see if that's uh, a suitable switch from, uh, uh, I forget what the name of the company is that bought JetPay. Um, is it ISOLV? Yeah. Oh, okay. So it's the same company. They're just they're pitching more more services to us. It's it's funny because this is iSolve and the computer paper is Solve IT. So solve IT. Yeah. Yeah. That's, okay. Yeah. That's my most confusing. You. Okay. So either way, I I started to look at it, and that makes more sense now because it looked like a lot of what we already had. So I, I assumed it was a competing company, um, but. Uh, yeah, no action needed on that at this point. Uh, next is the Berks County Association of Township Officials. Uh, this convention uh, for that is going to be held in October on the 17th at the Ole Fair Center at 5 p.m. There is no fee, uh, but we would need to make a motion to authorize uh, who we would want to be able to attend. Um, I believe in previous years, we have authorized uh, any supervisor, secretary, um or uh, road crew and i think the auditors as well so um 
pretty much anybody who is a, an appointed or elected official can can attend. So um, I'll, I'll keep with tradition and I'll make a motion to authorize uh, the any any interested supervisors, road crew, secretaries, auditors, um, or EMC personnel to attend the Berks County Con uh, Convention Thursday, October 17th at the Ole Fair Center. I'll second it. Motion made by Peter, seconded by Jesse. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Jesse? Aye. Okay. The next item is number 32. This is to advertise for uh, road crew positions on Indeed. We made a motion at May's meeting and have received one application. Um, I have not gotten a chance to review that yet. Uh, Jesse, I don't know if you got a chance to look over the, the application. It's actually three. I reviewed three. Three applications. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Um, there's two that are possible candidates um, that have very well-written resume. Well, uh, they're well-written. Um, one was on a notebook paper. Um, so that's what all we have. Okay. Um, Lisa, can you make sure? I'm, I'm sure I probably do. I just haven't seen it. Um, copies of the resumes or applications, I should say, in uh, digital format. Picture it is. Okay. Yeah. Uh, either way, just take that as a follow up for tomorrow. If you haven't sent it to me in email yet, please do, and I'll, I'll look them over first chance I can. I believe I sent both. They're in a PDF file. You sent. You sent. Pre-attachments in one email. Okay. I believe. Okay. It was like the last three might need to refresh it. Okay. Okay. Uh, next is we're working on populating a list of duties for the road crew. Um, this is going to be a, a twofold sort of thing. We are going to not only have a job description, a formalized job description for road crew members, we will have a list of uh, daily, weekly, monthly duties and responsibilities uh, clearly outlined. And uh, my suggestion is to put that in as part of the employee handbook. That we would have a section specifically related to uh, various roles. So we'd have some details around secretary. We'd have some details around treasurer. We'd have some details around road crew uh, as part of that that employee handbook, which its real sole purpose is to outline the the expectations and responsibilities of being an employee at the township. Peter, did you see, um, I saw a couple of uh, postings from other townships for just example, um, mm -hmm. purposes sent to the in email. I have not gotten a chance to see it yet, but I will take a look at it. Yeah, yeah, there, was, there was a couple examples of uh, what other municipalities are asking of their, in their, their job. Group. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I did see there was, I don't think it was that. There was something that you had sent four separate emails. There was, uh, was some, that it? Yeah, well, those four separate ones were some vehicle um, inspection form. That's, so, that's what it was. Equipment. So if you get into a vehicle, I, I'd like people to start walking around and checking them. That way nothing gets misses its damage due to lack of damage. Agreed. I'll, uh, I'll take a look at those and we'll add them into our our binder of stuff then there should be you're going to want to look at the last one and the three first ones <laughs> okay yeah I'll, I'll look at all of them i just didn't get a chance to do that yet some of them were um the, the examples i pulled for from one of the forms was european and they spell tire the european way they don't spell <laughs> how exotic yes T Y R E. okay yeah. Moving on to the next item uh, is number 34, the assistant secretary. Uh, we interviewed several candidates um, and we've opted to hire uh, Solans Kennedy. Uh, Sol uh, has started uh, training with Lisa. Uh, we would just need a motion to formally approve the hiring at the pay rate of $18 during her probationary period of 90 days. Uh, she would be working 25 hours a week plus uh, attendance at meetings. Uh, I will make a motion to ratify the hiring of Solens Kennedy as the assistant secretary. And I'll second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Jesse. Aye. 
Okay. Uh, the next item is the uh, zoning hearing board. Uh, it's with regret that uh, Dave Stabby has resigned. Uh, the board needs to fill that opening as soon as possible so that we have a, a full zoning hearing board. Uh, supervisors and other elected officials are not able to serve on that board while serving in a, an elected capacity. Um, so if there's anybody that is in the audience or knows of somebody who has a, a good uh, procedural mindset and uh, would be a good fit for the zoning hearing board, please have them reach out to the township office with their, their name in for consideration so that the board can uh, review and uh, hopefully find somebody to appoint to that position. Next is uh, the review of current employee pay rates. So the current pay rate for the secretary is $22.50. The assistant secretary is $18. Roadmaster is $21.50. Road crew is $20.50. Um, I'm thinking what we may have to do around the road crew stuff in order to uh, bring in people interested and willing to do that work, we may have to raise that rate. Um, I'd want to do a little bit of market research on that. And Jesse, that's, I think, uh, getting into territory that you might be a little more familiar with working for Penske. Um, if you oh, can right. find any. The one, uh, yeah, um, the one, the couple of the job postings had a salary expectation on them, too. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to start digging into them and also sending them to you and, and Irene to also review. Um, just to give us an idea what everybody else is paying in the area. Um, and uh, once we figure out exactly what we want to incorporate into that job, then we adjust according. Okay. Um, kind of as a segue on that, um, when Sue retired, we at the time had elevated the two secretaries that were assistant secretary to the role of secretary and uh Unfortunately, it looks like maybe uh, a wire got crossed or something got missed and their, their pay did not get adjusted. So in the case of Lisa, uh, Lisa should have been adjusted to twenty two fifty dollars at that time. Uh, so I'd like to make a motion to authorize uh, the retroactive pay or back pay for that duration after the 90-day period elapsed to current. I'll second that. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Nancy. Aye. Okay. Last item on the agenda is the emergency management coordinator's report. And uh, unless, I was going to say I didn't see anything submitted, so unless John is in the audience, um, oh. we're going to we're just going to skip that. Okay. Um, so the only comments that I really have the first thing is the review of the police report uh, last month was a busy month and uh, Larry had warned me about that. Uh, they had 58 citations issued and 37 traffic stops. Other than that, it was a pretty standard month, uh, but very, very, very busy on the, the ticketing. Um, and from what I understand, he said it was a lot of speed trapping on 422. Um, other item for attention is beginning with this November's election. The polling site will no longer be at the Marion Township building and will be over at the Marion Township Fire Department engine house. Uh, the address for that is 4127 Conrad Weiser Parkway. Uh, and just to, to reiterate that, it is not at the Marion Township building again. Um, this change was made by the County of Berks. So when you go to vote, go over to the, the engine house that's off of 422. Do not go to the township building. Can we get a can we put a sign out front or something that day? Oh yeah. Um, oh, yeah. we should put a sign out like a couple days in advance, but hundred percent there should be a sign on the door that says like the polling place has moved. Okay. But I will put it yeah. closer so they see yeah. it right away. Yeah. Okay. Uh Irene's not here, so uh Jesse, do you have any comments? Um, I don't. Um I see the Twilight Acres donation of a sign in monument. That was something that we like to cover. Um, I don't know who it was going to be donated to. I don't know if it was going to be donated to Marion Township or to the MTCA. Um, so that conversation, um, since I was not directly involved with that, Lee Dice was, I can't really speak to it. That makes sense. We'll remove it. He, he should really be here to say his piece and not just 
sidebar me because I, can, I, I can't make decisions based on, on that. It needs to be brought before the panel. <laughs> Oh, okay. okay. Uh, Julia, thank you for being on tonight to cover for Colin and or Andy. Uh, do you have any comments? Of course, you're welcome. Uh, nothing from me. I'll take everything back to Colin and Andy, and you should hear from them shortly. Okay. Fantastic. Thank you. Uh, Mike, do you have anything for the engineer side of things? Uh, the only thing I, is the gentleman in the back, I believe, had a question about sharing the road. He happened to be out with the building. When, yeah, we talked about that. The Brian Hassan. Okay, hang on, thank you, Chris. Uh, I did see that you guys approved, apparently, a plan from HEK Group for sharing the road. Yes. yes. But it was a bid, but yes. Approved, uh, technically, bid, whatever. Yeah. Um, is that scheduled then? Is that can be scheduled for this year? Also? It, it, it is it, scheduled for this year, but they have to provide all of the bonds and other documentation. We've issued the notice of intent to award. They have to supply that information. I will review it. Colin will review it. And once we get that uh, squared away, we will then have the board uh, make a recommendation for issuing a notice to proceed. I just know that there's a cutoff for us. Uh, I'm very aware. So uh, yeah, that's my only concern. Thinking a little later, it gets cold, but all of a sudden there there will be last. There is, but it's been pushed back later and later in recent years. So I, I think it'd be a great, great thing to use that. So yeah, I appreciate that. Thank you. all the other resident came in and asked if there is a way to band aid it so the road can come to the Not I, really. <laughs> because it, they bid it based off of the condition of the current road. Yeah. They start messing with it. There's certainly more hole. I don't know. It's pretty rough. I'm sure you're all driven on. That, that's it for me. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Lisa? Um, just about announcing for Civic Ready that is on the website that is uh, for notifications. I just want to make sure uh, we get that out there still and let everybody know about it. With the winter coming, the snow, the roads closed, um, that's the way we'll be like notified. So if you're not signed up and you need help, let me know. Um, <clears throat> When you're talking with your neighbors, make sure they're signed up so they know what's going on. So everybody is aware of any type of road conditions or any type of emergencies you need to get out. And then lastly, um, MedEd is trim uh, trim the trees. So you'll see them out and about um, doing that. And they will be using a special equipped helicopter. So um, if you see a little helicopter flying around will look weird. That's them trimming the trees. Um, that should be done between now and October. Um, of course, anybody has any concerns, they can always call the township and we can confirm if it's them or somebody else. And so, uh, pretty Lisa, much when, they go, when uh, they go to do that, let me know Let me know what the date is because uh, I'll, I'll probably try to take my kids out to see it. Seeing a, a helicopter trimming trees is probably going to be pretty wild. Yeah, uh, the letter we said said between now and October, but I can see if I can try to pinpoint that. Are you sure you can fly all around and look for trees that need to be trimmed in that? I've seen, I've seen some videos of the real helicopters trimming trees. Yeah. It's, wow. it, it is pretty wild. Wow. Now we got a letter. I can show you the letter wow. that says that they're going to be out and out. I myself. Yeah. But it just said between now and October, it didn't give me any dates, but I could see them for a So that's pretty much all I have. Okay. Uh, since we don't have a, a full panel, we'll uh, including Colin. Go sorry, ahead. I'm sorry, Jesse. I forgot um, to ask, ask about this. We also need to know when this joint mowing thing is going on. Um, what was supposed to be annually this joint mowing event with what was it, normal store? I was to say it's usually or, Tulpahawken that we mow with. Um, and, and I, I, can't, about the mowing, I, can't, I can't get a date out of what it's going to Well, so Jesse, I think we have a, a number in the office for Butch Fike. 
up in Tulpahawken, who's their roadmaster. Let's just call the other Butch. Okay. Okay, because I'll call him because if, if need be, I might have to step in and help with that. Well, I guess I heard this sometime after Labor Day, so it's supposed to be done before August thirty first. All right, for the contract. Well, we're we're pretty much right on August thirty first. Yeah, and I keep on no. asking, and he's like, "Well, that's what they told me after Labor Day, something about well, we yeah, go go go, go right to the source, call, call Butch Fike. He'll tell you. He'll give you a straight answer." Thank, okay. you. Thank you, Peter. Sorry about that. I forgot. Oh, no, no, no. No, uh, please. I'd much rather you ask. Um, okay, we're going to skip the executive session because we don't have proper representation on that. Uh, so I'll I'll close out saying welcome to the team, Soul. We're glad to have you. And I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting. The time is now 9.06. Second. We're call, Peter. Aye. That's it. Aye. Okay. Thank you, everyone. And uh, stay safe. Thank you, Peter.